actually causes foreign of kettle. Hello and welcome to today's class on likely questions on water. Now, let's go. The salt responsible for temporal hardness is dash. Calcium sulfate, calcium chloride, calcium bicarbonate, calcium sulfate. Which salt is responsible for temporal hardness? Now, what is temporal hardness? Temporal hardness is a hardness that can be removed by boiling. When you boil temporal hardness, it will be removed. So that type of hardness is what we refer to as temporal hardness. So which one can you remove here by boiling? Now, the one you can remove by boiling is what we call calcium hydrogen triosocarbonate 4. This is the type of hardness you can remove by boiling. So, now let's look at the answers. Calcium sulfate, no. Magnesium chloride, no. Calcium bicarbonate and magnesium sulfate. The answer is calcium bicarbonate. Another name for calcium hydrogen triazocarbonate 4 is calcium bicarbonate. This is why I always tell students that it is important you know the chemical formula as well as the chemical name. Okay, next, water is said to be temporarily hard when it contains dash. When do we say that water is temporarily hard? Calcium triazocarbonate 4 and magnesium hydrogen triazocarbonate 4. Calcium hydrogen triazocarbonate 4 and calcium triazocarbonate 4. Magnesium hydrogen triazocarbonate 4 and calcium tetrazosulfases. Calcium tetrazosulfases and calcium hydrogen triazocarbonate 4. Now, when a water is temporarily hard, we say it contains hydrogen triosocarbonate 4. Hydrogen triosocarbonate 4, whether that of calcium or magnesium. So, here the correct answer is what? A, because calcium hydrogen triosocarbonate 4 and magnesium hydrogen triosocarbonate 4. Remember, another name for it is also what? So, calcium bicarbonate or magnesium bicarbonate. But well, this is actually an old name. Okay, number three. The ions associated with hard water are dash. What are the ions associated with hard water? When we say a water is hard, what do we mean? We mean that it cannot lather easily with soap. And what are the ions present in that water? The ions present in that water include calcium ion and magnesium ion these are the ions present in the water so what's our answer so b is our answer let's look at another question okay so let's look at number four question the foreign of kettles is caused by the presence in water of dash what actually causes foreign of kettle you know um when you boil your water in kettle if the water is actually hard it causes um it causes some foreign, as in when you look inside your kettle, you will see something like milkish white deposits inside the kettle. Now, that is all referred to as what? Foreign. If you are making use of a boiler, the same thing is applicable to your boiler. Round the ring, you will see something like it's milkish white brown. That is referred to as what? Foreign of a uh, uh, boiler or kettle. Now, what actually causes the foreign of boiler or kettle. So what actually causes it is the presence of um, temporal hardness. Now you ask yourself, when you boil your water, what type of hardness does it remove? It removes what we call temporal hardness. And temporal hardness is what? Calcium hydrogen triosocarbonate 4 and magnesium hydrogen triosocarbonate 4. Magnesium hydrogen triazocarbonate 4. So when, what happens is that when you heat this, when you heat this, let me put it here so that it will be clearer. Calcium hydrogen triazocarbonate 4. Now, this is very unstable. When you heat it, it's going to give you calcium triazocarbonate 4 plus water plus carbon 4 oxide. Now, what actually causes the foreign is deposits of calcium triazocarbonate 4. Deposits of calcium triazocarbonate 4 is what causes the foreign of your kettle. Those deposits you see inside the kettle that makes the kettle to have different color is caused by 
deposit of what person tries to collect it for. So what's the answer to the question? D. Number five, permanent hardness of water can be removed by dash. Now, temporal hardness can be removed by boiling. Permanent hardness can be removed by what? There are several ways of removing permanent hardness. And one of it is by adding caustic soda. By adding caustic soda. Another one is by the use of what? Iron exchange resin. Iron exchange resin. These are the various ways of doing what? Removing permanent hardness. Okay, number six. In the treatment of water for town supply, calcium oxide is added to dash. So what's the function of calcium oxide in the treatment of water? To kill germs, to decrease acidity, to calculate the dead particles, to remove hardness. Now, calcium oxide is actually added to reduce the acidity. It is used to reduce the acidity present in the water. So what's the answer to that? D. B, rather. To decrease the acidity present in the water. Let's look at more questions. The importance of sodium aluminate in the treatment of water is to dash. Sodium aluminate. What's the function of sodium aluminate in treatment of water? Coagulate, cause coagulation, neutralize acidity, prevent goiter and tooth decay, kill germs. Now, sodium aluminate in the treatment of water, what is sodium aluminate? Sodium aluminate is an alum. And an alum is used in doing what? Alum is used in coagulation. Alum is used to coagulate fine particles in the treatment of water. So the answer to the question is what? A. Coagulate fine particles. That is cause coagulation. Then chlorination of water for town supply is carried out to dash. Chlorination. Why do we chlorinate? To make the water colorless, remove germs, make the water tasteful, remove odor. Once you hear the word chlorine, chlorine is to do what? Kill germs. Simple. So what's the answer? Remove germs. Water is passed through large settling tanks containing sodium aluminate 3 to remove dash. Now, sodium aluminate 3 is an alum, right? And what's the function of an alum in treatment of water to coagulate fine particles? So what's the answer? Coagulate large particles, no. Gems, fine particles, other. To remove fine particles. All those, uh, you know, in, in treatment of water, all the, all the deaths people have poured in water like something like cough the sputum you release in the water you know saliva some persons may be walking on the road they pour saliva they spit out saliva when the rain comes it carries all of them those particles do you see them with your eye no so you can't remove it it's not like a plank that you saw and then you remove it no so those particles are fine particles how do you remove them you remove them by adding an alum to coagulate those particles and then you add chlorine to do what to kill the germs. Are we together? Now, I would like us to note the following when it comes to treatment of water. Number one, chlorine is used to kill germs. Number two, calcium oxide is used to neutralize acidity. Number three, number three, fluorine is added to prevent tooth decay. Please note these things. They are very important. And the second thing I will need us to know includes the process of um, tre uh, treatment of water. There are actually four major processes. The processes include sedimentation, coagulation, filtration, filtration, and um, the last but not the least, chlorination. These are the four processes in distribution of, in treatment of water for town supply. Sedimentation, that is when the particles are allowed to sediment. You can use your hands or use some other things to remove the large particles. Something like if you see refuse dump on the water, you can easily remove it. Sedimentation. Then coagulation, this is where you add alum to coagulate fine particles present in the water. Then filtration, you allow the water to pass through a sand bed. 
in order to filter the water then chlorination after you have filtered the water you put some little amount of chlorine to do what to kill the germs okay we have come to the end of today's class and i hope you found value in today's class please do not forget to subscribe to this channel for more chemistry updates as well as it has to do with chemistry questions thank you very much for watching and see you in my next class bye